looking for cheap, fast, and reliable Madden Ultimate Coins, look no further than my sponsor, Mutt Reserve. Head on over to MuttReserve.com. Use code Poodle at checkout for 30% off your order. Take advantage, guys. Do not waste your money on packs. Skip the packs. Head on over. Pick up some coins. Enjoy. What's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another Madden Ultimate Team video, guys. And today, I'm going to go over the top most overrated players in Madden 21 right now, guys. Now, again, with overrated players, I've made this video in what feels like forever. It's been a while, guys. Probably haven't made it since like September, October ish, probably maybe even August. But it's a fun video to make. Now, quick disclaimer before I do get into the video, guys. When it comes to most overrated players in Madden, there are some criteria for me. Price comes into it as well as stats, but some players, their stats may suck, but they're not overrated. They're cheap, right? Some players, their stats may be decent, but their price is decent. Then there's some players whose prices are still pretty high and comparable, or, or they just hype around the card when I feel as though the card isn't different from other cards. Now, the way a card I think can be overpriced is if they stand out from the bunch. The way a card can be decently priced is if, compared to other cards, right? Like upper uh, upper tier cards, as if their card the stats good, right? But there's some cards where I feel like they're slightly lagging behind, or they have deficiencies, like can't get a power up, or they can't get certain chems, and that that alone just like why is that card the same price as another card, right? So, a few more things that I would like to go over in before I get into the video, guys. The list isn't out of like a specific number; it's not an order, right? From first to the last one, there's no order of whether or not that card's more rated than the other. It's just a list of overrated players. But guys, let's get into the video, and before we do, subscribe to the channel, turn on the noti bell, come join the family as per usual, guys. If you haven't ready. Uh, comment down below. Let me know who your most overrated player in Madden 21 is. I'd love to hear it. I want to know what you guys are thinking. But let's get into my list. So, starting one of the first guys on the list, and this is a guy that, again, I just don't understand why he's so expensive. And this isn't a hype card. It's just too expensive. And that's Sherman. Now, I know he's an LTD, but even as an LTD, for a card that's that slow, he should be 1.75 million. And people would probably like to use Sherman and certain schemes. I can see schemes where he's insane, right? Like, if you put him in a... Um, Put him in a super zone scheme and you have him on a on a, on a seahawks theme team with sprinter and you have him up to speed i could see him being good but for the meantime by himself i don't think he's worth 1.75 mil now again i know it's an ltd but at least like 1 mil 800k uh not much more to go over on this card just a card that i want to throw in there for like i don't know why that price is still the price it is now the next guy a guy that i actually really like i think he's good but here's the thing he's one of the more highly valued team of the year players and that's stefan diggs now what's wrong with stefan diggs it's simple He's 385k, one of the more expensive team of the year players, but he doesn't stand out from the rest, right? At the end of the day, we're at a point in the year which people aren't really getting, and that's been my argument for Madden lately, is that this is why I don't like thresholds. Thresholds make me look more at speed and power potential than I do at route running and spec, or catch traffic Y, because we're at a point in the year where pretty much as long as you're past a certain threshold, all you got to look for is speed, and can they be powered up and get that speed up, right? Why is that? Because they, they play the same between 90 and 95 sometimes, or until you get to 99, they all play the same. And it's one of the more sad things about the game, which I think they do need to fix. But for the most part, Stephon Diggs doesn't stand out. Power to be gets up to 95 speed. We have wide receivers with 96 speed. We'll have wide receivers pretty soon with 97 speed. He's already not the fastest guy in the game or one of the fastest receivers. And he also will be phased out pretty soon. And he carries a pretty hefty price tag of 380. Uh, I think it was like 382. Considering, you know, and, and that again, not that it's a crazy amount of coins, but it is one of the more high priced team of the year players. Or one of the more hyped team of the year players. And that's kind of why I've been kind of down on this card. Next card falls into a similar category. Another team of the year player that I think is it just falls behind because, but that's what Madden does. I mean, they like purposely do this to these cards. And that's Russell Wilson as it does load up. Russell Wilson has a team of the year card. And of course, it is going in near the 400K range. Now, the issue with Russell Wilson is an improviser, which means the abilities aren't always all there for him, as well as the fact that he's not, he's going to be phased out quickly, right? So here's the thing with Russell Wilson and why they always ruin his cards. Russell Wilson will get. 99 throw power, good accuracy, good everything. And you'll have speed. But now here's the thing. When you, you compare them to other guys in the market, right? You can go with Vic, who gets bad abilities as well, but he does get more speed. And you'll have all the same thresholds. You can go with Josh Allen, who will get better abilities and have similar, if not the same speed, and similar thresholds, right? So there's guys already in that range, but those guys are older. So you expect the new guys like Wilson to outfade them. So when you look at thresholds, it's like, why make an upgrade to Russell Wilson? And he's still maintaining a pretty high price tag nonetheless. Now, I like him. I see nothing wrong with him, but most meta people, most people that understand the way this game is played knows that that card won't have much of a different impact over other cards. Now, Russell Wilson, exciting, exciting card. The stats are amazing, but like I said, well, you got the, the next card that's going to really matter is the quarterback that gets close to 90 speed with the right, like strong arm, with the right stuff and that was josh allen we have guys like rich gannon we have newer quarterbacks as well plenty of other guys but russell wilson doesn't stand out from the pack for a team of the year quarterback which is always the issue with modern day players 
I don't know why EA does this. A modern player at the same overall, like a modern day running back versus a legend running back. The legend running back gets more speed. It just is what it is. It's how it's how EA has always been, uh, at least as of recently. I don't know why, but that's kind of how it is. So like I said, Arian Foster would never have gotten that. If Arian Foster was still playing, he wouldn't have gotten above 92 speed in his last card. He never used to get that much speed. Now he's the legend. Now he's getting 95 powered up speed. It's weird, but that's how it's been. But Russell Wilson, yeah, he's good. But that's for the price tag. If he was like a 310K, one of the, and they're all the same overall. So like, there's really no reason for the prices to be that differentiated. But it is what it is. Next, we got Philip Rivers. Again, I know he's a tribute. I know he's a, you know, he's a career tribute. He's gonna be expensive. But 800K. Much to Russell Wilson, except he won't get the speed. So he'll get the, he'll get some of the abilities, but he won't get speed. And the issue is this year again. Another thing is that you can get a field general quarterback with 80, 80 plus speed. You can get a strong arm quarterback with 80 plus speed. So why would you pick a field general that's below 80 speed? Now you might say, oh, but he has better short accuracy. He very well might. He has better play action. He very well might. But the thing is, they all play the same unless they hit 99. So he actually will hit medium and short 99, but so will a few other quarterbacks. So again, is it worth the extended price tag for the LTD? Which is what's ruined LTDs too, right? They used to give LTD some extra stats, right? Like an extra overall, extra stats. But those extra stats don't stand out too much when the plus ones or twos don't matter because they play the same, which is why I would love to see a transition. If I don't even know if they've ever not had thresholds. Maybe we used to just think. Maybe people used to just assume they didn't, but I would like to see a move more to a simulation style, which I understand. I guess because you spend money. I guess there's, 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 you know, there's research behind why they do what they do, but I would like something in between or plus 100 stats or something. I don't know. Next, we got Dalvin Cook, another team of the year player. Some of these team of the year players are going to be making this list just because that's the nature of how it's going to go. 347. A lot of people liked him. A lot of people found him fun. Again, mid-tier price, nothing too crazy, but Dalvin Cook is another example of a player I got a car that just doesn't differentiate themselves from the market. Again, he will get a 94 speed and a power up, which is good for 347. Now, the thing with him is, though, he gets all that, but there's other cards like him, like let's say Bo Jackson, who's actually more powerful, bigger frame, and gets one more speed. Alvin Kamara, just about the same exact card. We have Aaron Foster, actually gets much better break tackle, gets a 99 break tackle, right? Or better catching per se so there's a lot of running backs that either do what he does and if they don't do what he does they're either better or they do exactly what he does so again a card that just came out that already is not the best and doesn't differentiate from a few other guys that are near him that already means that he's gonna be phased out pretty soon so that price tag is just there because he's the team of the year high overall but for the most part he's really not worth that so that is why i stay away from those types of cards dalvin's great he's gonna be fun to play with like i said you just really can't escape the fact that they're gonna be phased out really soon you know mvp NFL awards, something, legends, ultimate legends, something will take him out. And next is Justin Jefferson. I've been seeing a bunch of comments of people asking why I didn't include him in my top 10. And again, take take what I said about Diggs, right? Diggs wasn't the fastest guy, so all the other stats don't matter. And people are saying, oh, but Justin Jefferson still has good catching stuff. Yes, but they don't play much different than a 99 overall. And they don't play much different between a 90 and a 97. Here's the thing. He doesn't have a power-up. No power-up means no plus one stats. So that means he will not get 95 speed. So now... On top of already not having, like, you know, all 99 catching route running, on top of already having all the same thresholds as everywhere other wide receiver, he now is two to three speed less than most other wide receivers, right? So that already sets him back another thing. So Justin Jefferson was my first option, which is why he's at the top of the list. He was one of the first ones I thought of. I don't think he's that great in real life. Of course, he's great. Um, in Madden, he could have been fun. But they hurt him. They didn't give him a power up. He, if he gets a power up in the near future, he'll be right there with Stephon Diggs. Still slightly overrated, but fun. But with 94 speed, again, and that's the issue with how we have to look at cards now. We have to look at them from the standpoint of, all right, everyone, every, they're all 90s now. Okay, so, you know, we used to be like, we used to get cards like this. Okay, so this guy's 94 speed, but this one has 93 we're route running all 90. Now, everything's 90. Everyone's all 90. So you're just looking at it like, okay, I need to focus on the speed. So Justin Jefferson does fall behind on that. So overall, we got Jefferson, Cook, Phillip Rivers, Russell Wilson, Diggs, and Sherman. Now, again, if you look at the, if you look at the, you know, base end of the list, Again, they're all they're all borderline similar in the same thing. They're overpriced a little bit, and their cards aren't too great. Now, again, you can find money. there's more people on this list. I went with the ones that really just stuck out to me, but like there'll be plenty of like guys like linemen that are like, oh, okay, this lineman wasn't that great, or you know, Corey Lindsay, which I actually really like Corey Lindsay. Quentin Nelson could have been better at some stuff. You know, maybe Randy Moss is just a speed demon. Barry Sanders could have done this better. A lot, a lot of players, but again, those are older guys. I'm really focusing on some of the newer guys that we've gotten recently to really compare. Asante Samuel is a bit overpriced considering the fact that there's some running, uh, cornerbacks in his area, but he is great. He always plays great, so we have to always take that into account too. But guys, that is about it for the video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Comment down below who's your most overrated player so far in Madden 21. Like who do you have either for the year, like who was at the time most overrated to you guys or the ones you know now.
that's about it. Like the video, comment down below, let me know what's going on. And of course, if you guys need coins, head over to my reserve. And I always use code Poodle for a discount at checkout. Thank you for watching. I'm out. Peace.